Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to experience the enlightening wisdom of the Supreme Master Ching Hai. Thank you. Thank you. You call me master, but you are all master. <laughs> you just forget, just forget. When we are united, when we remember the unity of the universe, which included ourselves, then we remember that we are one with God, one with the all-pervasive intelligence. And when we have forgotten this, then we have forgotten everything. And we try to remember that through different means, like prayers, uh, scriptures, yogas, meditation. All these are good. All these are good for us. One day we will truly remember that we are all masters. There is no one in this room or anywhere else who is not a master, because we cannot be separated from the master who is all-pervasive, and we are in that pervasiveness, and we are one with that. And that's the only thing we are made of. There's nothing else that made of our beings except God essence, except the greatest things that we call truth, wisdom, God, Goddess, Buddha, name whatever you like to call this greatest being in the universe, which is even one with us, with every of us. That's why at the time of death, the so-called ourselves or the body just lay flat on the ground or anywhere and doesn't move. Because that essence of all movement, of all activities has chosen to leave that physical instrument for that time, maybe seeking another instrument for further experiencing the limitless, the vastness of this great being, which we call God, which is one with us, actually. Once we found the unity again with this all-pervasive intelligence, all-pervasive love, we call this enlightenment. We call this God-realization, or self-realization, of um, attaining Buddhahood. <laughs> Different countries name this intelligence, this wisdom, this greatest love by different terminology because they speak different language. Otherwise, they're just one, the oneness that encompasses all things, including ourselves. And we are never, ever separated from this oneness, even if we try. The only reason we feel separated from this oneness is because we have chosen to forget the unity so that we can re-experience again this greatness, and we can recreate ourselves again through forgetfulness, or remember again the bliss of heaven, of unity with God, which is ourselves, our greatest self. For example, many people ask me all the time, what happened when we die? I always say, I didn't die yet, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we could experience the feeling of death during our deepest prayers or contemplation. When we are in the deepest prayers, we will be oblivious to all the surrounding, including ourselves, and all the worries will depart from us. This is the time when the Indian yogi is called samadhi. During this samadhi time, we will experience oneness with God. 
almost like the time when we die. That's why in the Bible it is mentioned that learn to die so that you will begin to live. And a saint also say, I die daily. Whoever forsake the flesh for the spirit will find God, etc., etc. How do we forget or forsake the flesh? Every day we have so much problem of living, of survival. Every little thing that we see around us, everything we encounter during our lifetime always try to remind us that we are a physical being. We are just a mere mortal, a weak, feeble human being, helpless in front of destiny. So how can we forget this? We can. We can if we practice. We can if we know how. It is very simple. Every one of us can do this. We have children from six years old, even younger than that, five. They already experience oneness with God. They experience the phenomena, feeling of forsaking the flesh and unite with the spirit, or visiting heaven while living. It's just like I'm coming to Africa to visit your beautiful country. And then tomorrow or next days, I will go back to another country or back to where my house is. It is as simple as that. We could visit heaven and go back to earth again not by the body, but by our own essence of being. We call it the soul or the spirit, which is always one with God. The body is just like a focus point so that the soul can pay all the attention there in order to gather some earthly experience that he wants to experience so that he can temporarily if the soul is a he or a she, we have to say something. Okay, she or he want to experience something in this material existence, then that soul or that part of that great beings of God has to focus on some point. Focus so much so that he can forget completely about his oneness with God. At that moment, we're born. We say we are born in the physical world and we have a body. And so long as the soul or that part of God consciousness still concentrate on this focus point of the body or whatever body he chose to focus on, we say that that's a he, that's a she, that's a human being, or that's a what. Actually, that part of the soul, or we call individual soul, has never left the whole of God consciousness. So we have never been really born, or we have never died. But we could choose to forget completely about God, about the whole unity of ourselves, and just focus on this physical being. Then we would never experience Godhood, even though God is all over us, <laughs> everywhere. But if we choose to be awakened, to remember, then we can. We can forsake our attention for a while. Don't focus on this physical being for a while. We focus back to the unity. Then we can find God. We realize that we have never left God. Then we one with God, and we are always never separated from God. So that is just the secret <laughs> of the universe. It's nothing much more than ourselves, our own consciousness, make choices all the time. We choose to be a human being, then we focus on a human body. So we have experience of human life, all the sorrow, the suffering, the happiness, the adventures of the flesh, the pleasures, the pain. The moment we feel we have enough of physical experience, we want 
to experience something different, then we choose another choice. We might choose to be a diva, or we might even choose to experience to be a flower. That's also possible. And that's why it is born the, the theory of reincarnation, of transmigration into different levels of existence. But actually, we have never gone anywhere at all. <laughs> Neither go up nor go down. We just forever flowing in the life force of the universe, forever being in God's hood, but forever experience different focus points for our own pleasure, for our own amusement. But while we are in the physical body, sometimes we have forgotten the wisdom of ourselves. Therefore, uh, we have forgotten the choice that we have made before we came here. So the choice we have made might have led us to some pain or suffering. Then now we complain. We complain so much because we don't like the suffering. The body doesn't like the suffering. The mind doesn't like the pressure. But that was what the soul wants to experience. He wants to experience pressure so that he can appreciate again the freedom in God consciousness. He wants to choose suffering so that he can enjoy thousandfold again when he enter eternal bliss once more. And that's why we are here, so that we know God more, we know ourselves more. Just like we are the king of uh, ancient nation, sometimes the king disguise himself as a commoner and go among the people in order to understand what uh, true citizenship is like. And then when he comes back, he appreciates his position better, his comfortable palace, or the servants that serve him, or the power that he has. When he disguises himself as a commoner, he has to undergo all kind of hardship, all kind of ordinariness, just like every one of his subjects. He cannot reveal himself that he's a king. In fact, he must completely cover up his identity so that he can truly, truly merge with the people of his nation and experience what their daily life is like. Similarly, we were once with God consciously at that time. We have never been away from God, but now we are not consciously remembering that. So we had enough of the suffering of this physical life, we had enough of the mundane experience, so we get bored. <laughs> we feel there's nothing really here anymore for us to enjoy. We would like to know where we come from, what else is there in this vast universe of God creation that we should experience. This is the time when we ask this question, when we wonder like this, this is the time we will experience enlightenment. We're ready. <laughs> We're ready for it. So we came all this time to be a human being, to be different human beings. Sometimes if we have focus on one focus point or one human existence, and we didn't feel we have enough of physical uh, enjoyment or physical adventure, then we focus on another existence of another human being again. And then we continue further until we get tired. So actually, anyone who is ready can experience God's light, God's unity and enlightenment. That is very simple like that. It's your choice only. You've chosen to forget, and now you've chosen to remember. <laughs> so if you think you have chosen now to remember again, then uh, of course I'm here to serve you. Because uh, God has given me permission and uh, ordered me to do that. Uh, maybe one day, after you have remembered everything about yourself, 
God will also say the same to you. Go, my son. Go, my daughter. Uh, do some service to my children or to myself. Because we have never been separated from God. Remember that. Even if you don't remember, just believe me. We have nowhere to go except inside God's consciousness. We have nowhere else except in God's house right now. Everywhere He encompasses every being in this universe. All the flowers, the sun, the moon, the star, the planets, the galaxies are all inside God. There is nothing that escapes Godhood. For a conscious soul, there is no such thing as hell, but just a temporary passing experience that he has to go through in the course of eternity because he has chosen to experience some so-called suffering in order to grow, in order to understand happiness again. Every soul, every little part of God has chosen to walk a different path in order to experience different aspects of God. And the whole experience of all humankind or all beings made up the wholeness of God. Therefore, Jesus said, love thy neighbor, even love thy enemies, because everyone is earth. They have chosen to play that role only. There is no enemy. Just us, just God, different focus points to make life more abundant, more variety, more different, more colorful. Just like he made us even so different colors so that we can enjoy each other. Like I look like yellow cornflakes, <laughs> corn. <laughs> <laughs> and you look like chocolate. <laughs> yes. And you look like icing, you know. <laughs> Christmas icing, yes, yes, yes. Because God is colorful. <laughs> Just like he made all different flowers, different colors, even fruit from the same soil, we obtain so much, many different fruits and different flowers. They are all different colors. The African people chose to always wear colorful clothes <laughs> because in size, I think they feel that they are very close to God. They are so happy. <laughs> So there is not really anything mysterious or difficult about fighting God or fighting our true self because we have never been anything else but God, God's essence, one with God, or God's children, God offspring, a spark of God, a part of God. It's just like the fish in the sea is born in the sea, it lives in the sea, and when it dies, it becomes the sea again, you know, thing like that. So we have never run anywhere. The problem with us now is that we have to change our thinking. We have to change. We have too much guilt feeling, guilty feel about everything. Feel guilty if we're successful. <laughs> People make us feel guilty if we're rich, even. If God gives us some richness or successful business, people make us feel guilty. Yes. If you have a beautiful wife, people make you feel bad also sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They come around and ask you, how did you get to know this uh, beautiful woman? <laughs> or they will ask her, what did you see in that guy? Huh? <laughs> He's so ugly, <laughs> thing like that. <laughs> yeah, it's none of their business. They make you feel bad. Yes, they make you feel guilty if you have a lot of money. They make you feel guilty if you are successful in political or business. And the whole world is feeling guilty about so many things because we have been taught that way. 
This doctrine is never right. So Jesus has to come, Moses has to come to set us free. Set us free not just by his sacrifice, but by the teaching, telling you that God is all loving. Knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given unto you. But where do you knock? <laughs> yes, we couldn't even knock anymore. We're too weak. We're burdened with guilt and fear, fear from this uh, revenge for God. There's no such thing as revenge for God. He, he is revengeful. He's like us, like you and me. War God. You do something good to me or else. This is not God. Can you imagine such a God? We no need to worship such a small, <laughs> minded, uh, narrow person. If he's really a person, if there is a God like that, we should not worry about worshiping him. Because he's just like one of any of the power abusing people. Even in this planet, think about it. You have children, or you have wife and husband. Sometimes your wife makes mistakes, your husband stray a little, you still forgive him. You still hug him and, okay, I forgive you, don't do it again. Uh, your, your kids sometimes give you so much trouble because they're stubborn, they don't listen to you, they cause you headache. You still forgive them, you still love them, and give them the best love that the parents can afford, even money, everything, sacrifice. So how would a God, the greatest father or mother of all the universe, could be revengeful? could condemn you to hell just because you're human, you don't know any better, and you make mistakes sometimes. So this kind of fear has been inflicted upon us generation after generations. That's why we find ourselves too weak now to even believe in there is a God who would even answer our prayers. That's why when we pray, we don't pray with a whole heart, we don't have conviction that our prayers will be answered. But it stayed in the Bible, knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given. It is like that. It is truly like that about God. No matter what you do, he will always answer your prayers. We just have to listen. I'm going to show you how to listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> 